Hello. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how to start it off, but uh, <laughs> good evening. Yeah. Um, well, it's been almost a month uh, since we went to go to. Actually, tomorrow uh, we'll make a month that we left. Uh, but this is the third year uh, here at this church that we've uh, been. And uh, every year we go, um, it's just a, a huge blessing. And uh, something, we kind of always have a, a different group go, um, different, you know, personalities and whatnot. And uh, we always get different things out of it every year. And uh, I told, uh, I was talking to Justin about this before we left, but this year, uh, the group we took, um, the way that it was different uh, was, you know, most of these that we, we take, whenever, uh, the last two years when we've went, we've had uh, several get saved or, or rededicate or things like that. And this year, the group that we took, uh, they were all pretty much already, you know, to that point and even further along in that point. And so I wasn't expecting, you know, a lot of um, kind of, a lot of them to go down to the altar or anything like that because they've already made those decisions. Um, but we were just expecting God to just kind of bring us closer together as a group. And uh, he definitely did that, uh, definitely, 100%. We did have one decision, and uh, the decision we had uh, was Andrew Archer, uh, some of you guys probably know him, uh, he decided to accept the call uh, to the ministry, and uh, we were very excited about that. We actually, last Sunday night, we went and heard him preach at uh, Cloverdale First Baptist, and I can just go ahead and tell you he is going to be a preacher, uh, because man, he, he blew it out of the water, I'm telling you. Um, he, he did amazing, and so we were really thankful uh, for the things that we saw God do, and we also want to thank you for your support and uh, your prayers, uh, just, you know, all, all the support that we had from you guys. I know some of you offered to uh, help uh, pay for it and pay for some that couldn't maybe afford it, and I really appreciate that. Uh, that means a lot, uh, you sowing that seed. And uh, uh, just to say thank you to Brother Lee Hill uh, for driving us up there, uh, because I know that was a fun, long drive, uh, especially on that very cold and cool bus that we have. Um, but also, I want to say thank you to Justin and Dana uh, and Melissa for going to chaperones. Um, you don't get a lot of sleep on this trip. Uh, so if you need a lot of sleep, uh, you may have to sacrifice on this trip. If you ever go with us, just saying. Um, one, one cool thing that, uh, that they have going there is uh, they do these uh, sports tournaments, and our kids are always excited about that. And, uh, you know, not, not the main focus of the trip, obviously, but it's a good part of it. And uh, one, one funny thing I wanted to share that happened was uh, the camp pastor, the guy that uh, preaches to us all week in the morning sessions, his name's Christian Newsom, and uh, he's a really awesome guy. Uh, we, me and him text sometimes. I have a pretty long relationship with him. Um, he used to be the quarterback at Liberty University up in Virginia, so he's a huge football guy. And uh, his son is Christian Newsom Jr., and uh, he's a quarterback as well. He's in 10th grade, I think. But uh, they were kind of the church to beat while we were there. At, uh, at everything because they brought about 150 students. They're a pretty big church. And um, <laughs> while we, when we, we got out there to play them in football, and uh, Christian, Christian Newsom Jr., he's the quarterback and everything. And um, <laughs> we get out there, and Laura Lee was our star quarterback, okay? Uh, she, she, was, she was representing for us. And um, we, uh, we had the ball on offense, and um, Christian, big Christian Newsom, he's over there kind of watching and kind of coaching him, and he's just kind of stepping back with his arms folded. First, I think maybe the, the very first play we had, I can't remember. It was, it was close. And Margaret takes off deep, and Laura Lee hit her perfect, and they scored a touchdown. <laughs> and <laughs> Christian Newsom, big Christian Newsom, he comes up and he's like, all right, wait, guys, hold on now. <laughs> he said, we can't be letting this happen. And, uh, you know, so uh, from there on out, it, it, it got different. But, yeah, the, the twins were giving everybody a rough time on the sports field. Um, but... We had a blast. It was great. We actually, uh, as far as sports go, we made it to the final, the championship in three different sports, but we didn't win any of them, but we still did pretty good. Um, but, man, it's just a fun time, and uh, I know that they all loved it and they all enjoyed it, and uh, you're going to hear from some of them here in a little bit. I don't know if all of them are sharing, um, but some of them, this is their first time to do this, so they might be a little nervous, but that's okay. Um, but let me see. Daniel, you want to start us off? Well, whether you want to or not, just come on. All right. Well, uh, the second day, which was Sunday, was my birthday, so that was kind of my special birthday, and uh, that's also the day we started sports, but that night, most of you may know, uh, Tony Nolan, he was there, he was speaking, and he spoke about his life, and how hard of a life he had, 
And uh, when we got there, I felt like I needed to pray with somebody for me going in the military, as most of y'all know. And then after Tony was got done speaking, we, uh, we were just sitting there singing. So I just went up to him and uh, told him, I said, hey, Tony, I'm sorry to interrupt your worship, but I got to ask you a serious question. And he turned around and he goes, yeah, ask away. So I told him I was in the process of joining the military. And I asked him if he'd pray for me to show the worship. And he, me and him prayed right there in the front. So that was probably my best memory of it. Well, I told Corey I was going to come up here and say, uh, as everybody else, <clears throat> I went to go tail camp, and I said I was going to say bye and just get off the stage, but I thought of a couple of other things. As Corey said, I feel like we came together better as a group, and we kind of bonded or whatever. And uh, Daniel was thought, thought Corey was going to do something when he was talking. He said, uh, this, uh, who was it? It was was it Travis, wasn't it? Talking about the unicorns. All right. There's there's your all right. So your guys. So when you're when you're dating, there, there's there's your there's your famales. And then there's some of them, some of them unicorns, some of them ain't. Your unicorns is where they 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 they're your best they're your best famales. And others, they're just, they're just like, all right. But your unicorn, there's the ones that they like football. That they they like everything you like. But it, but if ain't your unicorn, it's just it's just over. All right, that's what I'm saying about that. I'm done with that. Huh? Yeah, I need your I need your notes. I have my own. Well, thanks for taking back. Okay, as you know, I'm really nervous right now. Um, <laughs> um, this is actually my third year going, so uh, yeah. Um, again, it was it was a really amazing experience, and um, saw a lot of people. You know, God touched their lives and changed them in many ways. Um, I'm terrible at this. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, um, <clears throat> I'm choking right now. Um, okay, I know that our youth group has grown together and grown together in Christ, and, um, I thought this would be going well, but it's not. Um, <laughs> choking a lot. Okay, um, I lost my spot. Um, I feel that I have grown more in Christ each and every day after the trip. Um, I know I'm growing more by reading my Bible every day and praying more, um, and just, I know he's touched my life in many ways. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to choke so much. This is bad. <laughs> um, I feel that God is leading me toward the path maybe to music ministry. Um, I know while I was there, um, I had kind of thought about it and 
Um, I know that the devil was trying to say, no, you don't need to do this. You, you're not good enough, or um, people, people won't think you can sing or anything like that. But um, I know then and there, you know, God kind of overcame, and I thought, you know, I should do it, you know. And I know some of y'all know that I've been holding back. Um, but I feel like I need to start, you know, doing it because um, I feel like God wants me to do it. Um, and I think, like, just taking baby steps, as Melissa said, because I know her and Madison sat me down and we talked about it and we prayed about it. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. And I'm really thankful to be in this youth group. Um, I know I've been in it since seventh grade. and. I've seen a lot of changes and, you know, just the amount of people who've, you know, come and just God, you know, touched their lives. And I'm just so happy for that. And, um, yeah, I thought this would have gone a little better, but kind of choked at the beginning. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I was going to say something else. But, yeah. I'm really thankful that Corey came because, um, again, we've seen a tremendous increase in our youth and, you know, more and more people getting touched by God. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm back. All right, last year, Christian Newsom challenged us to do, uh, have a streak with God. So I thought, yeah, I can do that. And so first, first few weeks, I, I had it going, and I started to stray away. So and then this year, he did the same thing. So I prayed about it. I prayed really hard, and I've kept my, I've kept my streak the whole time. He did a... a message on like he named it now what like what after what after when we leave what are we going to do and I was like what am I going to do I'm going to yeah I'm going to go to school when, when it starts back up I'm going to tell everybody I know that I'm going to tell them that Jesus loves them I'm going to tell them that he died on the cross for you even like when you were sitting, still sinning and everything and I was like yeah that's what I'm going to do so I'm like, I'm really excited for school. I say I'm not, but I really am. <laughs> so I, I really want, I really want to tell a lot of people because I, I mean, yeah, it, it concerns me that my friends, a lot of my friends, they're, I know that they're not going to heaven. They're going to be going to hell. So I, I really want to tell them, especially on my football team. I got a lot of good friends on there, and I, I just don't want to see them. I don't know. I, I want to see them in heaven one day. And that's about it. Oh, okay. One second. Okay. Um, I was very lucky to say that I was fortunate to go to, on this trip with my friends and peers. We did many things at camp, such as breakout sessions, services where many people were sa either saved, rededicated their lives to God, or were called to the ministry, and recreation where we got to play sports or go down the bone-breaking water slide, and rock wall where we either went down okay, or you felt like you were about to die, literally about to die. <laughs> but one thing that stuck out to me at camp was one of the songs that Noah Cleveland and his worship band were singing. The title of the song was Church With No Walls. Um, the name of the song stuck out to me because there are so many churches that have walls, division, and judgment towards people, and they just want to be loved and feel equal and come to know God. Some quotes and Bible verses I really liked were, Christianity is not a religion, it's your personal relationship with God. Our suffering is not wasted. Repentance is a change of mind. 
Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And Luke 23, 29, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Also, kind of with what Corey said, I think like, like a lot of people's, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think kind of our youth group changed. We all came closer to God. I know I did. Um, I'm reading my Bible more and stuff, and I've kind of learned there's other things besides sports, classes, my studies, that all from that God matters more. And that matters more. So, yeah, pretty much done. Um, this was my first year to go to Go Tell. And one of my favorite speakers while we were there was Brittany Price. She came and talked to the girls' breakout group one day, and something she said really stood out to me. She said, God doesn't call us to comfort. He calls us to obedience. And that just really inspired me to go tell people about Jesus, even though it can be scary and even though I won't always feel comfortable. But I feel like I really grew closer to God on the trip, and our youth group really bonded and came together. We just got a lot closer, and I hope I get to go back next year. I had a great time at camp this year. I feel like I grew closer to everyone uh, in the youth group and uh, grew more in my walk with Christ. Um, this statement stood out to me while we were there. It, said, it says, God isn't worried about your comfort. And that means as Christians, we have to get out of, your, out of our comfort zone and share the gospel with others. And I can't wait to go back next year. It was my third year to go, and every year it gets better and better. Um, one thing that stood out to me was our fragrance lingers, such as uh, Be the Fragrance of Christ and Corinthians 2.15 says, for we, are, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing, and everywhere we go, we should always have the fragrance of, fragrance of Christ on us. Thanks. Uh, this was my second year to go to Gotel, and... Like Corey said, the sports were really fun, and we almost won an ultimate frisbee, but we was playing a church in Indiana, and they felt like some kind of rugby ultimate frisbee or something. They was like hitting people, knocking people down and stuff, and, but it's still a whole lot of fun. It's a, it's a good game. But this year, I feel like we grew a whole lot as a, as a group, and it was the last night we were there Scott Kemp was preaching and when he preaches like it, he always brings the heat That's, that night was the biggest altar call I've ever seen and I went I went into camp like I was just kind of going through the motions and stuff and not truly living for Christ and my, my faith was weak and everything and like I, I wasn't at a place where I need to be, and I went. I went in there like not. I wasn't thinking too highly of myself, and my youth group rallied around me. And now that we've left, my faith has been growing, 
every day. I'm starting to see like my worth and like how how God can use me and just how blessed that I truly am. And if y'all would, I'd just like go tell is an amazing camp and uh, I'd like to see them go back next year. admit I didn't really speak at camp during small groups I didn't talk because I was really just kind of absorbing it and it had much to say I don't really think I have much to say right now but I probably do I talk a lot um, as some of y'all know I am adopted and I keep up walls in my life around people and around my heart because of that and especially with certain people in during camp. For the most part, those have been, those were broke. God broke my heart for the people that I'm supposed to love the most, who love me more than anybody else in this world that I know of. That's it. Okay, so <clears throat> last year I took an entirely too long time, so I won't t keep y'all here too long. Huh? I don't. I don't want to hear it. There was this uh, one speaker for the guys' breakout who said something that he had heard from someone else. He said. Uh, I'm not having a bad day. I'm having a character building day. That got to me good. I was like, well then, how does that happen if you just want to give up? And I was like, God helps you through it. That's how you get through it. That's how it makes that day, not a bad day, a character building day. And one morning, Christian Newsom spoke and he said, he gave a message. It was called, What Gets in the Way Spiritually. It was in Genesis 35, uh, 1 through 15. And the, the points that he called off were family, dating and relationships, work, desire of wealth, and those are very good points. And like everyone else has said, I think we have grown a lot to closer to each other and closer to God. And I'm glad that at least one person made a, um, that, uh, uh, what's it called? Decision, yeah, thank you. And Corey, Archer blew off the roof. It, there's no roof there anymore. But I've, I think I've grown a lot closer to God. I was weak when I came there, like Austin said, walking in the motions. But I've, when we came back, I'm stepping up my game. And uh, also, uh, the thing I want to really challenge you with is uh, we, you know, we hear them say that they want to, you know, go and tell more people about Jesus and everything, but we got to make sure that we're doing that too. And so uh, I, they have a little accountability card that they fill out every Wednesday, and it just says, how well are you reading your Bible? How well are you praying? And one thing that's on there is uh, who are you praying for uh, to know Jesus right now? And I think it's really important that we constantly keep somebody, you know, circled in, uh, kind of in the rotation that we're trying to witness to and tell Jesus about. Um, because, man, I would hate, I tell them all the time, um, you know, praise God, I'm not going to have to go through this. But I would hate to get before God 
uh, you know, ha had been a Christian, got to heaven and everything, and he, you know, say, well, where, where's the people that you told about me? And then be up there empty-handed with nobody that I told about Jesus. Because what we're really good about doing is we say, well, hey, just come to church. And we think that, that we're done there, and that we've done our part. But, man, I'm talking about telling somebody, kind of what Brother Roger was saying this morning, telling somebody what Jesus has done in your life, uh, because that's, that, that's important. Eternity is at stake for people, and uh, we got to remember that. We have a, a video to show real quick. Um, I, this is the first time I've seen the video, um, but Justin made it, and I'm sure he did a great job, so check it out. Mother in a church hat clap, man, that sugar gave your color purple coming back clap. Uh, when that whole week beat you up and stretch you, but you hear that organ playing and remind you of your blessings. And on another note, she just hit another note. Chills down my spine, got me crying, make me overload. You don't know about it, though. Old school church hymns, deacons, got the arm and not a drum up in the first stand. Can you hear me now? Church close, sweaty.
I promised the twins I would get up here and say something. So as you can tell, the, um, the whole theme of them being there this year was kind of unity. So um, Psalms 133.1 says, I think that's right. Um, it says, how wonderful and pleasant it is, it is when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that, that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessings, even his everlasting life. So I found a poem, and it says, um, and I think this pretty much it should sum up, you know, basically our whole church, because we are a body of Christ and we are a family. It says, family isn't defined only by last names or by blood. It's defined by commitment and by love. It means showing up when you're needed most. It means having each other's backs. It means choosing to love each other even on those days when you struggle to like each other. It means never giving up on each other. And I just think as, as a body, as a church, that that's how we should be even on the days that we don't like each other. Because, I mean, we're that way at home and we don't leave our family. I think it should be the same way here. I think that's what a church with no walls means. So. Um, again, just thank you for your support and uh, prayers. Uh, we still had some that were out of town and weren't able to be here. Kamari, he'll probably like show up here in a little bit. He's always late. Um, so, um, but again, thank you so much. And uh, I just want to challenge you: if you have a, a child coming up, maybe going to be in the youth next uh, this next upcoming year, uh, or a grandchild, or just somebody you're trying to get. Uh, I say this every year, but if, if, if I could pick one trip for your child to go on, it would be this one, um, because I'm just telling you, it, it, it changes lives. Uh, this, this was my 13th year to go to this camp, uh, and it, because of it, I'm standing right here today. Um, so I just want to challenge you, um, you know, if you're, if you're struggling to get your child involved or grandchild or whoever, uh, if you will, just encourage them to go on this trip with us. Again, thank you so much. I'd like to have all of the youth to stand up, would you? We maybe don't say this often enough. And so many times I've heard people talk about the youth in their church and they say we need to do what we can to help them because they are the church of tomorrow. And that's true, they are. But something that we often forget is that they're also a part of the church of today. And so we, we need to do everything we can, y'all, to, to, to encourage them, to, to urge them on, to pray for them. Uh, we've, we've got a, a great group of kids that are, that are moving on out. Austin says he's not going, but uh, Corey will have to deal with that. But uh, uh, they're, they're going on, and they'll be, you know, following their dreams or they'll be doing what God wants them to do and and then those that we have to stay here right now and those younger ones who are going to be coming up into the group this next year don't ever forget to pray for them and and just remember as a church that any dime that's ever spent on our youth and our children is never wasted because it helps to lead them to a walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And guys, I'm so proud of you. I, th I thank God for you, and, and uh, I look forward to, to see what God is going to do in your life. All right? Thank you very much. Let's give them a good hand. Y'all can sit down. All right. Well, with, uh, with, with no further ado, we're going to... Um, stand and be dismissed and I'd like to uh, encourage you to go with us over to Miss Adele's it's it'll be a short visit once we get there we'll we'll uh, we'll unload and go in and and um, youth if y'all can really like for you to go it'd, it'd be good for you and be good for her to see you but uh, uh, let's let's just go and and um, just show Miss Adele how much we love her and how much we care 
and uh, that we're praying for. Okay, again, the bus is just outside here. If you want to ride the bus, that that would be great. Uh, but if not, we can you can just we'll follow each other over there and uh, go and visit her for a few minutes. Okay, all right. As so we bow our heads for our, for our closing time of prayer. Lord, we thank you tonight so much for what you've done in the lives of our, of our youth. And Lord, we, we just thank you for sending Corey to us, Lord. And, and we know that that was a God thing. It, it was not something that just happened. It was something that God worked out. And Lord, we thank you for what he's done and how he's helped our youth and, and the influence that he's had on them. And Lord, we pray that he would, he would continue to be used and as he encourages and instructs and teaches our kids uh, the things of God. Lord, we pray that you would just touch each of our hearts tonight and, and God, give us, a, give us a heart of compassion, give us a heart of love. And um, even as we uh, travel over to, to Miss Adele's, Lord, we just pray that we would encourage her. She's a saint, and when, when that time comes for her to go, she told me yesterday morning, she said, I'm ready when the Lord gets ready to, to take me, and, and that's such a comfort. But, Lord, she needs encouragement, and she needs to know, be reminded that we're praying for her. And so, Lord, I pray tonight you'd bless this visit as we go and make it, and, God, that, um, that you would be glorified through it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.